<laughs> oh yeah, it's time for a package from China, so let's go. <laughs> Hey, hey, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So in today's video, we are going to take a close look at the brand new game stick. Yep, it's that time again for a new kind of game stick. It's going to be a new version of the game stick, the GD10. And I was really curious if this thing is worth the money. The box is completely bust up like always because I'm really getting used to this. It comes with the professional gaming system or in other words, it's called Amialic 4.3. So the question always remains, how are the controllers, how is the overall quality? So let's find out. On the boxes they're claiming to have 4K Ultra HD game stick. And I'm guessing they try to explain to you that you can plug this thing into your 4K television. But it has nothing to do with 4K resolution. Alright, so let's do the unboxing together and uh, let's see. Inside we're having the game stick and this is called the game stick light. You know those names? It's so confusing because it doesn't say light on the box itself. And yep, you can remove the cap, plug this thing in your HDMI connection. And here we're finding the SD card with different configuration but also different price points. I got ourselves the 64 gigabyte. I think when I ordered this thing, I had no option whatsoever. Uh, oh man, I have a brain fart over here. Yep, yep, that's it. Be careful with these SD cards, they can get corrupted. So I always recommend get making a backup. Having over here the USB connection for connecting the dongle over here, getting one dongle and two controllers. That's actually how it works, because in here we're having the two controllers that come with the device. And it's always kind of interesting to see what they are actually making. They're now having fake PlayStation 5 controllers with an OK D-pad, feels kind of clickish. The joystick has been improved. You can just see having the special grip at the edge. So not the very cheap ones that we've seen before. So we don't have really nice, let's say, yeah, we do have like okay shoulder buttons but when it comes to the triggers this is no analog trigger whatsoever so that's actually how it is and in here the battery compartment for two double a batteries okay that's new normally we're having the triple a batteries the same for the second controller and then we're having even an extension cord so they're implementing this in the kit this is good because this thing is so thick it will not fit in every television and then we're having the micro usb uh, yeah, they're still using micro USB and what you need to do actually is plug this thing in your television or just in 2000 uh, 2000 milliamp normal full 5 volt charger yep, because you need to plug this thing in the side and that is how it get his power And of course the toilet paper manual And most of these manual are kind of pointless with no ex no any good like the overall explanation So it just says packaging the p5 pro so, you know, it's all so confusing, but I'm very curious about overall compatibility because you can just see it shows N64, Sega Saturn, and OK, and Dreamcast, and PlayStation Portable. But how will it run? Will it run OK, or is it absolutely, completely junk? So this is a great example. So this is not a monitor like a television. This is just a computer monitor with an HDMI, VGA and TVI in this case, but we're going to be using the HDMI. The HDMI, you can just see it doesn't fit because it's way too thick. And this problem is also known by many televisions. Of course, with bigger, let's say 55 te inches television, it doesn't have the problem. You can just plug it in. So we need to have the extension cord. So let's plug this thing in. So we need to plug it into the HDMI port over here, then we're going to be using this thing. I like plug it in there, and that's it. Where some televisions has a USB port, I don't have this option. So what we need to do is gain myself a 5 volt charge. Yep, normal charge. So like this particular model over here, just does some 5 volt charger. We're going to plug in, in here the USB, plug this thing into the wall socket, and we're ready to go. I'm quite surprised how it actually works. You plug it in and it works like a charm. This monitor is more like an older version that comes with built-in speakers, so it will automatically get my, let's say, audio signal. If you don't have this, you will have a problem because there is no extra, let's say, jack out for having an output for your audio separately than the HDMI. Besides that, there's all kinds of different stuff you can play with it. The controller is very responsive. So as you can see over there, there is no input delay whatsoever when it comes to menu. It is a lock menu, so select start and doesn't do anything else. So you can just see nothing works and it has to do simply because this is like a fixed emulic program. So underneath you will find some things like search, 
favorites and etc so there you can just go into that menu but as you can see over here you can search the games so everything have been configured to a certain point that you can't mess up the system but let's see what are we having when it comes to the different systems. Atari is on here, we're having even the Atari 5200, the 800 and the ST, Autonomous Wave, Commodore 64 and a lot of old school stuff all the way up I'm guessing to PlayStation 1. So it's kind of interesting to see what you can all play on this. So Open Bore is a great example, though we only have a couple of like, say, items on some of the platforms. So it doesn't spoil the fun of course, so we're having all kinds of different systems for Neo Geo, Neo Geo Pocket, Sega CD so it's kind of funny there are only a two of them on there that is what happens most of the time Dreamcast like they mentioned but only a couple of titles and in here having Sega Genesis the SG-1000 and we do have like a lot of different system but I want to mainly focus on let's say the latest devices so we do have PlayStation Portable with 25 different games and 64 PlayStation but let's start off with some 8-bit, 16-bit stuff and we're going to be moving all the way up to the later systems just to see how everything runs because this is going to be a hit or miss with these things. With the shoulder buttons we can switch between platforms when in the game menu and pressing let's say the back buttons or the L1 and R2 here we have the option to scroll very quickly through the list itself. So far I can see this thing has been sorted to alphabetic order but here you can just see that there are double games and that's what they're doing all the freaking time. It's such a mess and here we're having two Tetrises. I'm guessing due of the thumbnail are different regions that can't really be possible. Another thing is when pressing left or right it's also switching between let's say the different game lists. You can see it on the tiny icon next to the game. Yeah it's just something you really need to get used to but let's move on to some 8-bit stuff. First off, start with some old school games like Outrun. And let's see how this will actually play on this. The emulation has been configured through Retro Art with most of the emulators, especially the 8 bit and 16 bit stuff. But so far, so good. Everything seems to be working just fine. Pressing the start button will pause. But there is no special feature when it comes to, let's say, select the start. Beside having the option to implement cheats if they are installed. Low cheat file system. You can just see that we can mess around with it, but there is nothing pre-installed on here. We can make a quick load, quick save. And if you want to go back, you need to close the content. And it will give you the option to go back to the main menu itself. So it's quite basic, but you're just using RetroArch when it comes to, let's say, moving around in the menu and also when you're going to be back into the main menu itself. So moving on to some 16-bit Sega, let's see how this works. You know how the games should be played, you know, punch him in the face, kick him in the dick. That's how you need to play this with Beefcake and Wolfies. So far, no weird emulation glitches with the audio because I remember that that was an absolutely disaster with a lot of these cheaper devices. There we go. Oh yeah, beefcake, so we're just going to be kicking them now in the dick. Or, and they're going to be punching me in the face. That's a fact. Next up, some Sega CD with one of my favorite games, Final Fight CD. Absolutely amazing port, but beautiful music. It's quite unfortunate that they're only adding two games sometimes to these devices. Yeah, you can add more games if you want to, but the main problem is, just, of course, let's be honest, like, there are like a handful of good games on the Sega CD. For example, Snatcher is one of those. So when playing actually this game, I noticed that for me there was no input like whatsoever. The D-pad is very comfortable to play with this controller. I'm quite surprised that they're actually giving you a decent enough controller to enjoy some retro gaming. Another system you don't see very often on let's say cheap game sticks is the Sega 32X. Personally I love to play on my original Sega 32X. But they're getting really expensive now if you want to get yourself original hardware and not even to talk about the compatibility and the very expensive games. But again, Virtual Fighter or Sonic Knight, I think it was Sonic Knight, Knuckles Gaiotics, that was the name. It's an absolutely great game and yeah, relation performance on this thing is just great for 16-bit. I wish they made like a super cool Sega plug-and-play device that actually have everything of Sega. From let's say the Master System, 32X, Sega CD, Dreamcast and only Sega, you know, that would be awesome. Alright, so move up to some Sega Dreamcast, and I can tell you, this is the most difficult Sega to emulate on these devices. Uh, I can just see that it doesn't run on full 60 FPS, this is a weird thing, of course it's widescreen. 
but the performance itself, it's playable. They have been improving this compared with other models. Yeah, I'm satisfied at this point. Uh, I was thinking do I have a brain for it here, but no not really, there is no Sega Saturn like they mentioned in the freaking manual. So they have been lying, that's a thing, and I, you know what the problem is, they just randomly like grab those toilet paper manuals and just slap them in the boxes. And it's one of those things that is absolutely clear over here, because nope, there is no Sega Saturn. Okay, next up some Game Boy, and yeah, with Game Boy Classic and the color, it's going to be looking pretty hideous because it's going to be stretched out to the maximum level. And with some games, it's forgivable, but with the Game Boy Advance, for example, but not with the classic systems. So take that in consideration when actually getting something like this. This is not the way how you want to play. Also, there were no battles because the battles make it so much, let's say, better to look at. Going into the special menu, we can also make a quick load, quick save over here, but we cannot get in depth into some of the things like say, settings. And I mean, the settings that we're needing for messing around with some filters and make the game more enjoyable when it comes to the visual part. Moving on to some 16 bit with the Super Nintendo Famicom. And this is going to be absolutely an amazing system to play on here. And yep, widescreen shenanigans, that is unfortunate, but the emulation seems to be working fine. Already mentioned before that the D-pad is very nice on this controller, so I can move around without any problem whatsoever. I can also use the analog stick if you want to, so if you prefer that. So, but it's kind of cool to see how good it actually plays. Yeah, and these game stickers are just fine for that. Okay, the one thing I wanted to check out with Nintendo DS is actually if you're going to be playing this, how does it work out? So, the first thing that I've noticed that this is not the experience that you actually want to have. It stutters like crazy. So when you're pressing the right joystick, you can just actually chew something, like touch, so that's kind of cool. Uh, pressing the left joystick will give you the option to go into the game or going out of the game. And that's different compared with the other one, but yeah, let's be honest, this is unplayable. So the next thing we're going to do is going back to the main menu, and that's it. No, I want to go out! Thank you. Uh, what is the downside to the N64 emulator? There's no rumble pack, but also there is no like memory card configured, so we cannot save inside of the game. So pressing slider start, we can make a quick load, quick save. Just want to be clear about that. But let's see how the emulation performance is, how the controls have been configured. All right, so that seems to be all working fine. And the emulation is quite nice, it runs on native resolution, in other words, like with the mini PC we have the option to upscale it so everything looks so much better. But yeah, this is a good overall frames per second. Alright, also the triggers and the shoulder buttons have correctly configured so we can just enjoy and use the, just play the game like it should be. So that's absolutely nice. I do want to have an extra test and I do notice that when it comes to some overall like weird glitching and also the details are missing on the vehicles itself. But it seems to be that the overall emulation performance on 64 is quite decent. When there will be games that are more demanding, think about Conqueror's Bad Fur Day, 007, Golden Eye, those games will run pretty horrible or not, let's put it a bit to the point that you can just enjoy them. But well, it's quite interesting to see that we can actually play these games now on a cheap game stick. So they have been improving this significantly, absolutely. Oh yeah, boost power! With PlayStation we have amazing performance. It has been in quite a long time now we've been testing these like say plug and play devices and PlayStation is most of the time no problem. What is the problem? That they are removing the background music and the reason why they do this or they just don't know how to add those or they're doing this because they're using like very small SD cards. They want to cram out so much possible information on there that they decided to just say, hey, just remove the audio. It saves up a lot of space because where some of the games are like, say, 600 and megabytes, but most of the time it's going to be due of the audio. Come on, man. It's a game without the soul if the music isn't there. So that's absolutely a bad thing they're doing. Alright, so get in some PlayStation Portable. This is a system that looks absolutely horrible. 
And that's to do because when you're going into the special menu of here pressing select like start, this time we don't have RetroArch, it runs on the emulator PPSSPP. And in the settings here we can see that we're having OpenGL enabled as the background. So frame skipping hasn't been enabled or disabled has been enabled, sorry, I'm completely like messing this up. But the thing is, when you're going to be looking at this one time resolution, so it was quite interesting to see how it is with the performance. So the next thing I wanted to do actually is see how it is with the frames per second. But we can basically turn this on, so that's what we're going to be doing today. And let's continue so we can check out the frames per second. So, so far so good, it runs on 60 frames per second with Tekken 5. So that is quite interesting to see where all the other dongles have issues with stutterings, framescaping enabled. This thing seems to be running just fine. So that do makes me wonder, like what happens if you're going to be like trying God of War or more demanding games? But this is just a great example of like how you don't want to play PlayStation Portable. I have no idea why they're adding games like this. And if you go be adding yourself, you just need to filter and look into what games are playable. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so horrible, absolutely horrible. So next up, let's move into the arcade stuff. And there's all kinds of arcade systems on here. But starting off with some Thomas Wave, yep, it freezes. So that is one of those things that well, I just wanted to test these things. And I mean particularly the game boxes because they completely mess it up. So let's pull out the power and let's reboot it and go to a different platform. So moving on to some other MAME systems, a Thomas Wave doesn't boot up at all, but when it comes to other devices like MAME, it runs just fine. Like most devices, when it comes to cheap game boxes, we cannot play Killer Instinct and some more demanding games like Tekken in the MAME. We need to use PlayStation for Tekken. Beside that, everything seems to be running just fine, no problem whatsoever. It runs throughout, let's say, RetroArch, like all the other systems. But I do have the idea that they're using an extra filter over the arcade part with some Neo Geo. Especially when you're looking at the titles and the characters, everything looks so nicely and so smooth. But when it comes to that, everything seems to be working just fine. It's quite unfortunate the Atomos Wave doesn't boot up, because I think it's a system that has a couple of hidden gems that are playable on device like this. But so far so good when it comes to the arcade part. Oh yeah, so I completely forgot something. So I wanted to boot up into the Sega Naomi part, but so what I understand of they're running on the same kind of emulator. And also this one doesn't boot up. Wah, 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 wah. So this is absolutely a great example of like how everything has been connected behind the monitor. What a cable nightmare. The idea of a stick is that you can just plug it in and play. So that part's actually like vanished away when you're basically using an extension cord like this but let's do a quick tear down and let's see what we're having when it comes to all the other parts what are we finding in the inside are they using old tech are they old old crazy like say hardware and how is the overall cooling i can use my fingernail to open it up i don't even need a freaking pry tool all right so let's be very gentle they're not going to be destroying anything but it'd be the first time i would go to rip everything apart so it does get really hot after some time. And whoa, they're using a very big piece of metal on top of here. Okay, ooh, I ripped the paramount pad. So I don't know when they're, what the hell they were doing over there, but they were like gluing and what kind of a shenanigans. Wait, what are they doing? Okay, so I don't get this. They're having thermal pad with double-sided tape. Yeah, so that is not a good idea. Oh man, what the weird thinking overall let's see what we're having so this is the s905 m the quad core that's an old let's say chip that they're using the quad chip with i think i think this is two gigabytes of ram but this is actually what we're getting with this device and this is some old school tech and we're let's say the first generation of super consoles back in the day and you can say back in the day because it's already a couple of years ago all right
So when it comes to this 4K game stick, Lite Pro, whatever it's called, it's so confusing, but there are some improvements. So first of all, the controller is absolutely improvement to begin with. I'm quite surprised to see actually how comfortable it plays. We don't have these PlayStation knockoff controllers. They're absolutely horrible and smell chemical. So they are absolutely improving some of the things. So I must give them some extra wicked kudos for that. So regarding the game stick, it's the same old shenanigans when it comes to, let's say, the emulation and overall performance. But the most disappointing part is that we cannot change anything out because you have like a lot of systems at the point that doesn't boot up at all and that's quite unfortunate thank you all for watching consider subscribing hit the little bell and it would be great to see you in the next video